Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm working on another one of Tommy's reels. This one is the Shimano, it's the Trinidad uh, TN20. It's a uh, large star drag uh, saltwater fishing reel with a 6.2 to 1 gear ratio. And what we'll do today is we're going to take this apart. We'll show you how it's made, how to service it, and uh, we'll give you an explanation of the steps each way. Well, what I start with is taking off the exterior pieces. And as I do, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel if you like these types of videos. And uh, you'll see uh, all the videos I'm posting if you use that notification button. And I do all kinds of reels, including salt water, fresh water, bait casters, spinning reels, old and new alike. So we uh, take our pieces and parts, we put them into a parts tray, and then I uh, can get access to some of the other pieces. So we'll take this tie down clamp off, and then we'll take the nut cap off. Right, that looks like an 11 millimeter nut. We're going to back that one off, and that will allow us access to to remove the exterior pieces. You need to do that with this reel because this reel has a uh, series of uh, washers and light before you can remove the case. If I remember, this is one of these that has what I call the rocket spring and that's usually, you can tell that usually by just looking at the uh, hole in here. So you need to be careful as you remove the star adjuster because there is a little spring mounted uh, piece that's going to um, be lodged underneath and you need to make sure that you protect it so that you don't lose it. And we're probably right here with it. Yeah, we are. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to drop down the main washer and then I'm going to remove this piece with the pliers. Now if you were a little reckless you probably would lose this thing. I call it a rocket. Uh, spring for two reasons. One, kind of looks like a little bit of a rocket ship, but two, it will shoot and fly away from you. So be very careful as you load that. The rest of the spring is nestled inside of the uh, shaft here. You don't need to pull that spring. What you do need to do is take some pictures along the way. You want to notice the sequence now of the washers. You have a flat washer and two bell washers. And generally what I'll do is I'll just take them off and put them right back into the star adjuster before I, I do anything else. That way I can keep track of how they came off so that I can reinstall them in the same way. A little bearing shield comes next and then there's a water shield I think. And Tommy, uh, Tommy fishes in the mid-Atlantic seaboard here in New Jersey. He's very hard on his reels. and. Uh, he gets them serviced annually, but over the course of, uh, of time, they, they do take their share of salt, water, and uh, I don't want to say abuse, but let's just say heavy use. How's that? So one of the keys to keeping your reels fishing for a long time is an annual service. And uh, just make sure that these services include doing what we're doing here. Take the reel apart, inspect the pieces, make sure that they're all good. That's your water seal. Uh, if any parts are worn or broken, replace them. And then uh, what you want to do is you want to clean out the old lubrications and restore with fresh. All right. Well, one of the things we want to do here is note the size of the screws. If you uh, like, I recommend that you take pictures along the way. That way it'll tell you where the pieces and parts go if you get lost or disoriented. And you can also grab a schematic. You can see here the use is collars have um, salt residue on them. All right, so those four screws are the same. And I suspect that the two screws below here, and I probably need a small screwdriver for that, are shorter, but we'll find out. The, the screw head is definitely shorter. Yep, so these two below are shorter. And we may need to take the two out in the middle here. I haven't been working on one of these in a while. But before I do that, I'm just going to use some penetrating oil here just to loosen up the salt on the collars of those screws. 
Then I'm going to put the screws into a parts tray as well. Now I use a parts tray to organize my work. You don't need to do that. Uh, you can lay them out on a towel. A lot of folks like to lay them out as they've taken them off. Whatever process works for you, whichever is best, that's what I recommend that you do. Here's your two center screws, and now we should be able to take the side plate off. I'm holding pressure with my fingers to make sure that the side plate doesn't get out and off ahead of me. I do want to kind of take this off with some care. All right, and I'm just going to put those two side plates into my part tray. We should be able to remove the side plow. And uh, you can see it's been a while since it's been serviced. We have a, a bunch of dried grease on there. We have a spring, and notice that there's a little copper spring that's going to go on the bottom, a uh, copper uh, washer that's going to go on the bottom of that. So don't lose them. This one got stuck in the grease here. So we want to make sure we get that off. And that we know where that is when it comes time to reinstall. What that stops is it stops the spring from catching in the yoke here. So let's, uh, let's do the first thing with the case. It doesn't really matter which way you go with the organization of these. Just have a plan to organize. And I'm going to wipe down the old grease with a paper towel. And I'm going to use the penetrating oil as the, 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 the solvent for this. All right, there we go. We're all solved down there. All you want to do on the top one here is just a little bit of oil underneath. And I believe we should have a burring in here. No, we don't. We just have a uh, an adjuster. All right, some have burring, some don't. That thumb doesn't. All right, we can put the side plate off. Take a picture here, if you're not using the schematic. That very big gear says you've got quite a gear ratio, which is that six point something to one. We have the gear sleeve, which has two studs opposing, kind of flat pieces there. That's going to go into the top case here. Should be able to remove your main gear now. I'm going to take the washer off the back of that. We'll wipe this down. And then you have the basic Shimano washers there. We want to take out next the anti-reverse dog, and that's held in place by these two screws. And I guess I can make this a little bit easier for everybody if we just go ahead and service that main gear so that I don't have Everybody thinking I'm jumping all over the place. All right, those go in there. Under the main gear, we remove the, the one uh, of the drag washers. These are hard washers. And you need to be careful with them. If you don't watch it, they can snap. They're very brittle kind of washers. And your goal here is to bring these off, clean them up. There we go. It's almost like, I don't want to say glass, but it's a very, very brittle one. So don't try to flex these in any way. They will uh, they'll snap right on you. Okay, we've cleaned out the body. Big washer goes in first. And this is a six drag system. You'll notice a couple of things on here. This has been oiled pretty well and I'm having an issue kind of just separating it all. But this is the way that your system goes. It goes with the first washer in, then the second one has got the square mount on it. It's square centered mount. That goes in. We're gonna just lay these off to the side. Another hard washer and being careful with that. Then you have the eared washer. I'm just taking the old greases off of that. They're pointed down. That's how this one's going to go in. Then you have the top washer here. And the cap washer. 
And we'll put these on when we go back to put those onto the sleeve. And then this one goes underneath. All right. Take a picture. You've taken the two screws out of this retainer clip here. Now you can pull the gear piece up. That's the click ratchet. Again, you're going to do the same thing here. A lot of this just has to do with cleaning. This is typical of what I find in Tommy's reels. He keeps them oiled, but that oil kind of turns to sludge after a while. You lay that off to the side. Lay the main gear off to the side. Leave that collar washer off to the side. And now we can just remove our yoke and pinion gear. You can see the old greases on here. Notice on this yoke that there's a slot side that's on an angle facing up on the one side. That faces towards the inside of the reel to accept the, um, the push down from the jack. And I'm going to grease this piece. Find the angled piece on that. Install this way so that the spool gear side is facing there. The spool side. Check the teeth on your pinion gear, and then re-grease. I'm going to lay that right on the table for a moment. Well, we got to get inside to get to the spool. we got one more piece there first. That's this main jack assembly. Again, we're just going to get the old greases off of this for now. And we'll come back and do a little bit of lubrication when we reassemble. You've got two flathead screws and a uh, Phillips head screw that should be holding in the rest of the side plate here. So let's go ahead and take those off. And this is where pictures help because you want to keep track of what you're doing. There's a lot of pieces and parts that have come off of this reel. And if you don't keep that track, well, you're either going to misinstall or you're going to find out that you have some leftover pieces because you forgot to install. Or worse, if you've just kind of left them bundled up, well, they can fall apart and uh, go missing. And then your, your service is delayed by the time it takes you to get the replacement parts. So there's two. Here's the third one. And I like this food tray that I use as a parts container because it has multiple slots that enable me to uh, kind of put them in the corners. This should come off now. may need an assist. Just be gentle when you're, when you're doing this. You don't want to get anything going crazy. There you go. All right, that comes off. We have a race and we have the inside of the spool. Let me take that off. And Tommy does that to me. And then on the back side of this, for your back end service, now you can do the same thing. I'm going to use some penetrating oil here to clear that up. And this is the only way you get access to that spool, so pay, pay attention to that. I'm going to clean up. We have a little bit of dirt there. I'm using a cotton swab to clean this up. There we go. It's nice and clean. Just mop up the extra penetrating oil with a paper towel. Oil the bearings. I oil the bearings. I don't uh, I use the uh, lube, lubes on them, but that's your choice. My choice is oiling. And I'm going to cut his leader here just because it always gets in the way when we uh, go to reinstall. And then what I like to do is I like to put a rubber band on there to hold that tight. A lot of times what will happen with these spools and the like is that it will trap the line inside the frame and then we'll, uh, we'll get stuck a little bit there. All right, that will hold that down. A little bit of dirt and grease on the side here. Time for a fresh paper towel. We'll just mop up that little bit of grit and line there. So if you have any questions on this reel or any reel in particular, maybe you're working on one and you're stuck. Uh, I get a couple of reel in the bag projects in every now and then from folks that got stuck and kind of gave up on a reel. Don't do that. I will uh, 
I'll be happy to try and answer a question, get you back on the right track if, uh, if I can. All right, there's just some kind of a tar almost there, so we're going to just gently scrape that off. There we go. And I noticed that two of the brakes have fallen off of the spool. We're going to go reinstall the brakes right now. And I just use a little uh, pliers to do that. It just seems to work easier for me when I do that. One on each side. If you have a steady hand and smaller fingers, you can put them on just as it is. We oiled the one uh, bearing. Here's the other bearing for the spool. We're going to make sure that gets a nice drink of oil as well. And now we can just go ahead and put this back in. And again, if you didn't... Uh, didn't bind up that um, spool with, with the rubber band, you may have had a little bit of trouble there. We're going to grab the grease brush and we're going to get some onto the shaft, which is going to go through that pinion gear. And then I'm not sure if I have a bushing or a burring here, and it probably would make sense to go ahead and, and uh, check. But I'm going to just do the same thing here. If it's a burring or a bushing, doesn't matter. I'll flood that with oil. I'm going to turn the post. That'll work it in. If that's the case, I'll also slide a little bit around the back here. And that's, that's acceptable. All right. I'm going to take our paper towel, clean off the excess here. And now what you have basically is you have an empty uh, face plate or bridge cover. And let's just go ahead and put that back in. Looking for the sets. Once you have that face place set, then let's go back to your box. You know you have your two flat screws or flat head screws. These are small, be careful with them. Let's put those in. So there's several of these reels out there that use this plate bridge structure uh, from Shimano. And uh, that's what you need to do. I think I just worked on a Torium that also had this kind of setup to it. All right, that's one. This is where my little corners of my parts tray help because that's how I've segregated out the, the pieces. This is two. And three goes up top here. Okay, that's all set up. So let's restart building the rest of this now. Here's your jack assembly. We want to get some grease onto the back of this. That's where it's going to slide on your main plate. You can put a little bit on the plate itself. And then we're going to just line that up here. Very important when you go to reinstall the, the uh, rest of the outside plate. Note where the orientation is on this hole because that's where you're going to have to put the, the other piece in. We can take our Yoke assembly, remember the slotted side goes into the spool. Let's bring that down. And you can turn that until you mesh it to the spool to bring that in completely. Right now, I'm going over to where that spring was. I'm not going to put the springs in yet, but I am going to put that little washer on both posts. That way I won't forget it later when it matters. spring on first. All right, let's uh, take our anti-reverse assembly then. Square piece, we're looking for this as the seat. So you want to do two things. You want to bring this over and seat that down just like that. We have the cover next. I'm going to tie down through this. Go ahead and align the screw holes with that. And we have our two small screws that are going to hold that in place. And I'm going to use a little bit of grease onto the tip of my screwdriver to try and hold that so that I can center it and drive it back down. 
And I'm not going to tighten this one all the way down until I get the other piece aligned properly. That's about right. Do the same thing again. This trick there. Hold that screw. Bring that in. So there's really three manufacturers when you come to salt water that uh, kind of have the dominance. It's Penn, it's Shimano, and it's Daiwa. And uh, I'm a fan of all three lines. I certainly like the Shimano reels. It's a matter of price point, too. All right, that's your traditional uh, forked anti-reverse dog. There is an instant anti-reverse in this one, so that's acting as a fail-safe. And if you're turning the reel, everything's fine. When you go to back up the reel, it pulls it in, and that sets the lock. Pulls it in, sets the lock. Okay, hard washer is next. We wiped off the excess on that little quick ratchet. Now again, we want to work so that we get the square of the main gear. And we should probably grease that. Take a look on your main gear. Make sure all of the teeth are uniform and crisp. that up. And you don't have to get the grease on every tooth. You have offset sizes of the, the gears that will cause you to uh, spread the grease around. All right, there we go. Here's your last one of the drag washers. We have our slotted gear then. Now we want to take the springs. And the two little washers go on top of those springs. That's how we found them in the case, if you remember. So this is kind of backwards to that, right? All right. All I see here is exterior parts now. So we want to take our side plate on the anti-reverse you should just clean out the dirt don't go greasing it it's a friction driven device and we should be able to install right over this and if you have those little washers set just press down you may want to use a pick to square it up make sure that you seat firmly and then you want to Push in on your piece here. Now, that didn't set, so we're going to do that again. You want to move your stud up on this. Just grab these again. Come on, son of a bitch. It's a little weep hole. Is that what's holding me back?
Okay, looks like my camera stopped. I hope I didn't miss much. I think we ran out last uh, screws here, but what we're doing is we're loading up the side plate screws. That's the four of those, and we have the two that go in the center. And remember, we have those little copper washers sitting there, kind of holding the, the piece snug. And one more. There we go. Then we'll show you how to set that little rocket spring. That's the exciting piece. It'll always give a make your heart jump a little bit when you're working with that one because it can shoot and it can really ruin your day. Okay, so I'm going to just wipe off some of the grease that was transferred from my hands and the like on the reel. All right, we've got our setup here for the rest of this. Gonna turn this over. That's the one that's going to trap the spring. Remember what we had here? We had a little weatherproofing kind of a thing was the first one. I'm not sure if I remember if I oiled that bearing or not, so let's go ahead and do that. And a little paper thin one. And we have the bearing washer, which is next. Flat washer. We have the two bell washers. I like to put them opposing. And now we've got to get that hole set. Right here, that's what I call the rocket spring hole. I'm going to take the glove off for this just because it is a little bit delicate for me. I'm going to take that little stud. And interestingly enough, there's two ways to do this. This is the way I've kind of settled on over time now. One of the ways is to trap that with the top washer, which is what I do. The other one, you can actually put a toothpick, or if this thing can slide all the way in. Oh, it can. How do you like that? Not enough. Not enough. You can grab that inner spring, compress it that way. That will pull in the... Uh, the little spring head here, and that will cause it to uh, to seat properly. All right, well, we're going to just go ahead and kind of work with this now. I'm going to hold the washer. At the risk of dislodging this, you can see that the stud is trapping, or that little stud is trapped by that washer. That's what you need to do. Once you have that trapped and started, just kind of bring it down. Eventually, this is going to push down on that washer to release that clip. There you go. Now you can hear it. All right. There we go. Uh, next up, then, would be the back piece. There's a little washer for the separation between the star adjuster and the handle, and our handle. And hand thread this cap because it's very easy to cross thread this one. You don't want to do that. And sometimes it takes a couple of goes at it to do that. But you won't be sad. There we go. You just can hear a click if you back it off. And we just need to get our wrench to tighten this down. It's going to hold that fast. And generally speaking, if you're off a little bit, you can leave that collar on and just slightly adjust. There's only one more piece in the parts tray which says we're pretty much done with this reel. Just got to get this little tie down screw in. We'll do the same thing we did with the other one. Just put a little dab of grease onto the screwdriver to hold it to help you get it started. And we'll drive this down. All right, let's, uh, let's give it a test, see how we did. So we should be in free spool. That'll allow you to spin, and it's spinning very nicely. You have an adjuster here if you want to loosen it up a little bit to spin it more or tighten it down to uh, let it run a little bit more true. This actually can be run. Okay, very nice. Very quiet reading. All right, into gear. 
nice and smooth, right? Are the drags holding? Drags are holding. So once you do that for your test, back those drags off. You don't want to keep them compressed. That'll uh, shorten the life of the drag. So there you go. Shimano Trinidad TN20 high speed reel 6.2 to 1. That's how you take it apart, service it, put it back together again, keep it fishing. Uh, and I'm sure Tommy will be happy with that. To all of our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for everything it is that you do to keep us safe. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.